What's up my friends? My name is Forge and welcome back to our brand new Minecraft beta. So today we got the first 1.18 beta of 1.18.0.20 and this is a pretty big beta. Minecraft 1.17 completely done with. No more 1.17 betas which is absolutely great. So in today's video I'm going to go over every single feature that you need to know within this week's beta and if you want to read the full chase log for yourselves then there will be a link down below in the description. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. There's one very important thing that you need to know when you're playing within this week's beta. So usually when you're creating up a new Caves and Cliffs world, there's usually a toggle down here that says Caves and Cliffs. It has been completely removed. And that's because when you create up a brand new world, all the features that are in the update, they will automatically be applied. So they won't be asking you to apply it they won't be giving you any prompts or anything like that. But also keep in mind that if you have a favorite world, make sure that you copy that world and make a backup. So that way you do not end up ruining your entire world. So to do that, you can just come down there to the very bottom, then select the copy world, and then you're all set. But I just recommend exporting the world if you're like on Windows 10, so that way you have yourself the world within your own files. Let's move on to Caves Eclipse features. Now right now the new world generation in part 2 is currently incompatible with creation of custom biomes. In this beta expect worlds with custom bomb generation to be unstable and for custom bombs to only exist in currently saved out of areas of the world. They also changed ore generation rates to be in parity with Java Edition. They fixed an issue that prevented large trees from growing below Y0. Small drip leaves they now properly generate as part of large caves. And then we have cave generation. The old caves can now reach all the way to the surface. The old cave carver placement is now on parity with Java Edition. Floating water no longer generates in caves. Then we have feature placement. Metal flowers no longer replace blocks in villages or other structures. Tough blob feature now generates below Y0. Deep slate no longer generates above Y0. Amethyst geodes now get placed in the correct Y range during world generation. Next up is world generation. The updated feature placement of granite, andesite, diorite, dirt, and gravel to Master Java Edition. They tweaked peaks to make smaller mountains look more like proper jagged mounds instead of illy mounds. So once I turn around, this is what the new mounds now look like. And my goodness, you know what? I think they look so much better than they did before. And if you thought these mounds were cool, look at these mountains. These mounds look really cool. Like seriously, the new mound generation in 1.18, it is just really, really good. They improved the blending between old and new chunks. Mineshaft tunnels cannot replace bedrock anymore. But now we're on to features and bug fixes. Players, they no longer get disconnected if the server and client have different runtime block IDs. They optimize the time it takes to place the vines in the overworld. Added missing screen reader on the controller loss connection prompt. Corrected portal locations when the portal was moved but the location was not updated. Now breaking a block below fire it no longer creates invisible fire blocks when do fire take game will disable. They did something with the render distance to where it will now prompt you to end up changing it to a recommended render distance. So right now I'm at 16. And my recommendation for render distance is 24 chunks. Now seriously it says recommended. If I go any higher than that then it gives us this prompt. This higher render distance could cause a low frame rate crashes or other unexpected behavior. So if you're on a weaker device then I recommend that you take this into consideration because it might save you a frame or two. So render distance default and max settings have been updated for better performance. A prompt now warns players that they will be taken back to the main menu if they sign in while in game. The carved pumpkin enchanted glint that now only covers the item instead of the entire slot. So let's say I grab this pumpkin right here and I open up my inventory. Right now the pumpkin is enchanted. But before, it would just enchant the entire slot and it has not been fixed. They fixed a bug that could occur on older worlds where looking up in the minecart would display the inside of the minecart blocking the player's view. They updated item rendering so enchanted items are no longer being visible in the nether. And no, um, that's not my typo. 
that is actually in the chains log. I'm not joking on that one. Big old typo. That's meant to be will, not R. The store update prompt no longer appears for no internet connection or session start failure. Mobs can now pass over trap doors and they can no longer pass through campfires. Axolotls now animate correctly when airborne. Sweetberry bushes now hurt mobs. Mobs no longer try to pass through sweetberry bushes. Structure blocks can now be saved and loaded within current dimension height limits. They fix an issue where searching for non-existent content brought up the incorrect one result message. They fixed overlapping text on offerings occurring in a 4x3 resolution screen. They fixed Java Edition parody while lying in a bed multiplayer and a message will show how many players are sleeping in the bed while waiting for all players to sleep. Now that's actually one of my favorite features. Because a lot of times when you're laying in a bed, you don't really know how many more players need to be sleeping in a bed. But now you'll know how many people need to be sleeping so that way the time can change back to day. They provided better visual feedback and ints for different render distance settings. The raid mobs now despawn after a raid ends if the player moves too far away. The raid boss bar is now red instead of purple and vindicators they no longer naturally spawn in illager patrols. The hero with the village effect it now applies to all players who helped kill the raider once a raid is defeated. And the effect remains on the players even if they travel outside the village. And now we're on to the technical changes. So the order of function calls triggered by the execute command inside a function are now consistent. They added catching support for subchunk requests and fixed issues with holes in the terrain. They fixed a rendering error that could occur when attempting to render a vanilla mob in a base game version prior to the version that mob was introduced through JSON files. The most constant errors and warnings they will now only display once per world. And then finally, item scripting. And I'm just gonna let you look at the change log for that type of stuff. And with that being said, that's basically it for everything in this week's beta of 1.18.0.20. If you wanna look at the change log for yourselves, then there will be a link down below in the description. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts as well. If you enjoyed today's video, then consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and don't forget to turn on notifications. And I will catch you next time. Goodbye.